This video is going to be a mix of a tutorial and a review of Krita's current vector tools in 4.0. The reason is the stability uh, is lacking sometimes and I expect that the UX is going to get better over time. So I will need to create more tutorials for that. But I'm going to run you through the basics here. First, we are going to change the workspace. For that, you go to the top right corner of the screen, click that icon, and I like to use Big Pain 2 because it balances the interface. The columns are the same size on the left and on the right. And you will see that even if it's not meant for vectors, uh, I think it works really well. So I'm going to expand my color palette because we're going to use it. This is one thing I love about Krita's vector tools. The vector specific tools are only the four icons you see at the top of the toolbox. This is because in Krita, you use the same drawing tools for painting. So I can paint and draw and create anything like squares and other shapes with pixels. And I can use the exact same tools on vector layers, except for the freehand paintbrush. When you start Krita, you have a pixel layer created for you. We are going to remove it with shift and delete. All right, let's create our vector layer now. So we're going to head to the bottom of the layers docker and you want to click on the arrow next to the add layer button where you can find all the mass types you can create and create a vector layer. You can see the icon is slightly different. Now we're going to delete the other layer, the pixel or painting layer with shift delete. And on the vector layer, now, if you try to use the freehand brush tool, you will get a little tooltip telling you that you can't paint on that layer. So that's one way you know that you are not on a pixel layer, right? You can't use the freehand brush tool, but you can use the other tools to draw vector shapes. So let's start with a square here. In the tool options, you can see that I've set my fill to use the foreground color. So that's the color that's currently active on the advanced color selector and at the top of the dual color icon in the toolbar and no outline so it means no stroke in the case of a vector shape now you can click and drag anywhere to create your vector shape to select and modify your shape you're going to use the arrow select tool so this is standard in vectors and in this case, you always have a transform manipulator around vector shapes. Again, that is pretty standard in the world of vectors. So you can scale the shape, you can move it, and you can rotate it by placing the cursor around the corners. And your transforms are always preserved. So you can uh, transform around the pivot, by the way. So your scale is always relative to how your shape is rotated, which is quite handy. Uh, first thing that is a bit limiting, you can press Alt to rotate by 45 degree increments, but I haven't found a way to, like it doesn't snap to the global angles, and that even if you set global coordinates on, so that's a little cumbersome. There's no easy way to reset the rotation from this tool. All right, so I'm going to delete that shape and draw a new one here. Use the vector selection tool. And if you double click on the shape, so you don't have to move with the stylus, it's a little bit hard. But if I double click with the mouse, I'm going to switch to the corner or the node selection tool. Again, standard in vector shapes and vector drawing. And you can use that to modify the shape's properties. In the case of the rectangle tool, you will get that corner that allows you to round out the corners of your shape. Now, this is something you get for the base shapes of the rectangle and the circle, the ellipse, to easily scale it. Now, if I draw a polygon, I'm going to remove the outline and use a fill. So I'll draw a random shape, press enter to validate the drawing, select the node selection tool. Now I can modify each of the points on the polygon by clicking and dragging on it. You can shift click to select multiple points. You can click and drag on any edge to round it out based on where you click. You can also 
click and drag to select multiple nodes at the same time. Uh, one of the things that are a bit weird to me is it seems the vector shape is trying to snap to itself. You can see it struggling a little bit with the snapping options. So you can press Shift S to deactivate them, which is also a bit of a pity because you want to use snapping, but you want items to snap to other shapes. Again, for the most part, I consider these to be either minor bugs or small areas where the UX could use improvements and you can expect them to get that in the future. Now, let's delete that shape again with delete. Always select it with the selection tool and I'm going to draw a new square so that we can add a nice gradient to our shape and change our color. So first thing, one of the things I really like about Krita right now is how when you have a vector shape selected, you can easily recolor it with the palette, but you also use the same coloring tools you use for your painting. So you can press Shift A to bring the color selector and you can modify the color of your shape in real time. This is really good. Now, the problem is it doesn't work for the stroke. So when you press X, at the moment, the foreground and background colors don't swap. And even if you have a stroke active on your shape, you won't be able to recolor it with that color picker. Again, an area for improvement. So now let's add a stroke around our vector shape. In the tool options, you want to go to the stroke tab and you're going to pick a solid color fill, that's the second icon. From there, you can change the color in the tool options docker, but it's not really convenient. You can also open the background color picker by double clicking on the background color. And from there, you can select another color. When you press OK, the outline of your shape will have changed. I'm going to make the stroke thicker, double click there again, and make the color more different from the fill color so we can clearly see the stroke. And if you press Shift A and you use the main color selector, you can change the fill color on the fly. Now, you can also use gradients for your strokes and also for your fill. So let's use the third tab in the tool options docker and select the gradient fill option. And by default, it's going to use basic gradient. You have nodes that appear on top of the fill where you can move the gradient nodes that way. So I'm going to move the gradient node a little bit inside the shape so we can clearly see what's happening. You use the gradient stop editor in the tool options to modify the gradient. So you can see the selected color is highlighted in blue. So if I press shift A to bring my color picker and change the color, it's going to assign it to the currently selected color stop. Now, I wish by clicking on the gradient node, it would select the other color stop. It doesn't always work. You can see here, not working too well. Now, if I select the second color stop, I have to do it in the tool options docker. Then I can change the color with the color picker, but it doesn't change the opacity of the color. So you can see the slider is at zero at the moment, and I have to pull it back up to one to get the color I see on the gradient. Now, I've got a problem with that as well. Say if I'm using a range or a really different color, and I set the opacity of the color down to zero, I should get some gradient to orange and then to transparent. But if you have the opacity set to zero, it will completely ignore that color, which is a bit strange as it's not how vector programs work usually. Also, the gradients representation seems to be in a different color space at the moment. We get some nice pink transition and we get gray on the screen because of the color space we are using. That's more of a detail. Okay, so with that, we can duplicate our shapes. You press Ctrl C and Ctrl V to respectively copy and paste it. Ctrl X to cut it. Ctrl V to paste it. Now, if you want to paste it in place, you will use Ctrl J to duplicate your vector layer. Then you have a copy of your first layer. So it's been duplicated in place. And anytime you can 
modify your vector shapes on your different layer and press Ctrl E to merge two vector layers. And if you have two vector layers like that, it's going to merge them as vector, which is quite convenient. Again, this means that vector and Krita work kind of the same way, like as closely as possible to painting tools, which is where it has a lot of potential to me. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I want nicer colors and I'm going to remove the stroke and remove the gradient as well. Have plain colors on both shapes. Say I want to merge them together. At the moment, these are special shapes, right? Th these are not regular vector paths. These are special squares in Krita that where I can round the corners like so. Now, if you want to turn them into paths, you have to use the corner or the node selection tool, right click and go to path. This is going to consolidate the shape as a vector curve. And from there, so I'm going to do the same on the other square to path. And from there, if I select them both, I can right click and use logical operations on them. So unite will compound them as a single vector shape. If I use intersect, I will only get the area that intersects between the two shapes. If I select subtract, it will subtract one shape to the other, so it will create a gap. You can also use transforms on shapes, like you can rotate and mirror them. So you have access to the basic operations you'd expect in a vector program. Now, one thing you don't have at the moment is the ability to expand this layer and see all the curves that are inside of it. That would be really nice and especially nice to have it in the layers docker. When you have many shapes in a vector layer, it's a bit hard to spot them all. You can't press Ctrl A to select them all. You've got to click and drag with the selection tool. Then you can see the overlap, but you don't know which is in front of which. It's a little tricky. So the only way to spot the difference then is to select one of the shapes, modify the color, and then you can see, okay, this one is in the back. I want to bring it to front maybe. You have a few shortcuts for that. You may have noticed the calligraphy pen in the vector toolbox. This is not your actual pen tool in other programs. This is a special calligraphy tool. To be fair, it's something I wouldn't use too much. It draws a vector strip in a calligraphy style. However, if you want the pen tool, you have to use the Bezier curve tool. This is the equivalent of the pen in other programs. This is a topic for a different tutorial, but if you are looking for the pen tool and the pencil tool, they are respectively the Bezier curve tool, and the next one, the freehand path tool, which will automatically smooth the curve you draw. And you can then select and modify this curve anytime. It creates really clean vector paths. That is for some basics of the vector tools. In the next video, we will create some game sprite from that. A few notes as this is, as I said, a mixed review and a tutorial. I think the vector tools have a lot of potential in Krita. It will need UX and uh, feature improvements, but mostly UX moving forward, especially unifying it more and more. For example, I'd like to be able to select the gradient tool and just draw a gradient and edit it in place here, like Game did in the latest version. It's really good. Select the colors on the canvas uh, and to have a unified tool that works for painting and for vector. But I'm pretty sure that the developers thought about it already. So I'm not worried at all in the future. One thing I've never seen a vector program do, and that would be incredible, but it's the ability to use the selection tools on vector nodes, because often you lack that flexibility of you know being able to just select the points that you want. Blender has that, but again, I've never seen it in a 2D vector program, only in 3D. And now one thing that's pretty important is that anytime you can import 
SVG from other programs and you can copy and paste shapes you've drawn in a program like Inkscape directly into Krita as vector. This means it also has great interpolability with Inkscape where you can create your vectors and then vector layers interface very well with painting layers. So if I press Ctrl Alt G to create a clipping group, that's the shortcut I use here. I'm going to press B to select the paintbrush, select something can paint with some chalk, for example. I can paint inside of my shape, like paint over my nice vector base and mix vector and raster art, which was the big selling point for the popular program Affinity Designer. Well, you can do it in Krita as well. And yeah, now that I think of it, there are small things, for example, Control D to deselect would be nice also on vector. Now one last note, this is a group. This is one of the limitations that the system has at the moment. You can't really select a shape inside a group easily. So I can't edit inside of my group and you have to right click ungroup and then select the next group. So I've grouped the cap and the body of the bottle separately right click ungroup and only then can you select the individual shapes and manipulate them. One last note, if a developer ever comes around here, some ability to toggle to that node tool with alt click or something like that would be nice because with the stylus double clicking is just not possible or making it so well with the stylus you don't move the shape as soon as you click on it. You have some very small margin to work with. So my thoughts on Vector in Krita 4 is, well, they rewrote the entire Vector system, the Vector engine, if you want, ported it to SVG. It needs polish at the moment, but I think they've got the right idea and system having Vector tightly integrated in a raster program. It's the mix between Photoshop and Illustrator in open source, like a lot of people saw that in Affinity Designer. In my experience, Affinity Designer is outstanding, but the vector and the pixel workspaces are completely separate. And in practice, I only use vector in that program. I don't like to use the pixel tool so much. So I think that Krita's vector system has a lot of potential. So at the moment, Krita is not there yet in terms of vector. Uh, it does have snapping, a grid system, the ability to arrange vector. M most of the basics are, are there. You just need some polish on top of that to make the experience smoother creating vector drawings. That said, thank you kindly for watching this review. In the next video, we're going to create a game asset, a bit like the one you can see here. In the meantime, be creative, have fun, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.